the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I greet you all with the great feast of Great Saturday. We've been a long time in coming to this holy day. We've fasted and we've prayed, we've struggled, we've read, and all of this has led to this great day. All of this preparation is here, being fulfilled. Right now the tomb still bears the body of the Lord, but in reality the Lord is everywhere. Well, he's in the grave bodily. He's with the thief in paradise. In his soul, he's in Hades. And he's, of course, always in a throne with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God is everywhere present and fills us all things. And when we are fortunate enough to receive Holy Communion, he is present in us by his promise that he will abide in us and we will abide in him. When the news came to Christ's disciples, it came to unreliable, and I put this in quotes, witnesses. It came to women who in the first century in Judea were not considered reliable witnesses. If we were going to make up a story about Christ's resurrection, surely we'd pick someone reliable. But the Gospels outline specifically that it was the women who came and saw him first. And they shared that wonderful news with the disciples. <coughs> this wonderful blessing from God, his holy body and blood, it cleanses the whole of the universe. When you go to the Holy Land and you see the place of Golgotha, the place of the skull where the crucifixion took place, underneath is hollowed out an altar dedicated to Saint and our forerunner, first parent, Adam. And by church tradition, you'll see that there is, beneath most crucifixion scenes, a skull. This is the skull of Adam, and this is no accident, because the blood of Christ cleansed as it trickled down from the cross through the ground, through the earth, and lighted upon the head, the skull of Adam, from the beginning man, from the first man to the very last, Christ heals all. Today, in holy Jerusalem, they are awaiting the holy flame, if it hasn't already come down yet. This harrowing of hell, where all of the saints of the Old Testament were waiting for Christ. They were listening to the words of St. John the Baptist, who was beheaded and was already preaching in Hades. Christ is coming. Just wait a little bit longer. We have that joy. Just a little bit longer and it will be Pascha. We'll have the resurrection of the Lord. All of our struggles... It's fulfilled, completed. All of the, our joys are made more joyful. All of our sorrows are put away in light of the resurrection of our Lord. The history of mankind has led us to this day. Just a little bit more, like St. John the Baptist is telling those in Hades, and you'll be free. Just a little bit more, and we'll receive the freedom and the joy and the light and the grace of Holy Pascha, I mean.